Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode. Are you a fine art photographer looking for the perfect camera to shoot your next masterpiece? Well, then look no further. So yeah, recently I picked up this branded abomination of a 35 millimeter camera. Ever since I saw it in the negative feedback video, I just knew I had to have it. Not only as the crown jewel to adorn my camera collection, but as the perfectly crafted pale lager to make everyone think I have a drinking problem. In all seriousness, yeah, I found a pretty good deal on the camera on eBay and just said, f it, YOLO. And well. Here I am, using what little free time I have to make a video about it. In this video, I thought I'd offer up the first impressions on this camera with the goal of doing a full review on it later on. So to test this thing out, I had an upcoming trip to adult Disneyland for a bachelor's party. And while there were no strippers or drug related murders on the agenda, I figured at the very least I'd blend in with this camera. Unfortunately, in true Las Vegas fashion, my phone got ganked at the club and with it all of my distasteful close-up nudes and the footage from that weekend. So enjoy this brief historical reenactment. So yeah, while I was in Vegas, I shot with Kodak Color Plus 200, and most of my shots turned out a bit muddy, like most of my memory from that weekend. Despite this, I actually thought the handling of the camera was not bad. I love the design where you flip the tab up here to rewind your film. That right there is some next level SpaceX engineering, if I do say so myself. So if you're looking for a point and shoot that's undeniably as classy as the Contax T2, this may be the camera for you. The outer shell is made of high-grade ballistic titanium featuring an unethically sourced blood diamond bezeled Zeiss lens. I'm just kidding, this shit's plastic. Just like my future calf implants. It weighs a little bit more than an empty beer can, but not quite as much as a full beer can. I think this is how all things should be measured. My initial impression of the lens is that it's actually not too bad. There's quite a bit of pin cushion distortion and chromatic aberration around the edges, but that's actually something that can be fixed in Lightroom, should you desire but I actually thought the aberration looked unique, so I kept it. Anyway, the bachelor party was a good test run, but now it's time for the end of the groom's life, I mean the wedding. After doing a little bit more research, I decided I should try and use a higher ISO film, so this time around I used Portra 800. So Monica and I drove down to Orange County. Are you excited to be the flower girl today? Oh boy. Where we met up with the gang, and I definitely impressed everyone with my epic dunking skills in the backyard. At which point my friends all begged me to go pro, but I told them, no way Jose, I'd rather sit here and let Premiere Pro crash on me 17 times while I edit this stupid beer video at three in the morning. This camera was definitely a topic of conversation amongst me amigos, uh, which is always fun, especially when that conversation is, why the f are you slamming a beer at 8.30 in the morning?
With this plastic imitation of what I consider to be one of life's greatest gifts, I was somehow able to take this shot. Which honestly, I think might be one of my best, but that's not a very high bar. Speaking of bars, there was an open one at the reception, which I must say was quite beautiful, even if there were no donkeys, dragons, or last minute ogre reveals. So after I single-handedly tore up the dance floor to a trap remix of Mambo Number no. 5 and the crowd finally stopped booing, we all headed back to the Airbnb where I snapped more beer shots. The next day was spent recovering from a hangover, so it was pretty chill. We did eventually leave the Airbnb to go drink in the park and of course scrap with the violent gangs of local thugs that were defending their turf. We don't want no trouble. Baxter, I did that one for you. Now, after checking out the photos, you may be thinking to yourself, wow, Jason really has a fondness for ceilings. Sure, but I definitely think there's some sort of mismatch going on between the viewfinder and the lens because most of my shots definitely had a lot of non-intentional headroom. So now that I've had a chance to fully evaluate the camera, let's talk about my impressions of this handsome beast. Look and design, 10 out of 10. This thing is a work of art that Michelangelo himself would jerk off to. It should be hanging in a museum. This thing makes the Sistine Chapel look half-assed. Ergonomics are great. I mean, if you've ever held a can of beer or soda and thought, hey, this is uncomfortable and it sucks, then maybe this isn't the camera for you. I also just love how the brim of the can here is what you use to wind your film too. Lens quality, as I mentioned before, is not great. We're looking at pincushion distortion, aberration, and the lens is about as sharp as an uninflated balloon. I think what this camera is great for is snapshot, maybe even portrait kind of work, because it definitely pulls everyone's attention when you whip this bad boy out, especially at an AA meeting or Sunday morning church. The flash is uh, not too bad. I wouldn't say it's overly powerful, but it gets the job done. Sometimes it'll take a minute to charge up after you've just fired it, but you can just use that time to take a sip of your real beer. The only thing that I wasn't really a fan of on this camera was the rewinding. As I mentioned before, you flip the tab here and reverse wind the brim, but I found that it's not always obvious when you've rewound all the way back, which is definitely what happened here. I thought I had rewound all the way, opened the back of the camera, and saw what no film photographer should ever see, if you know what I'm saying. If you're rewinding all the way and you get down to zero, you won't be able to keep going, so you need to press this little black button up here to keep rewinding. And that's why I thought I had rewound all the way. What else is there to say, really? It's basically a disposable camera, except reusable, of course. I'm pretty sure it's got one shutter speed, one f-stop, and fixed focus. 800 speed film seems to definitely be the way to go with it as well. Like I said, I'll do a full review on this camera later on, but in the meantime, there's only one thing I wish I could change about this, and that is that I wish it was a real beer.